This week, Blackmagic Design finally got around to releasing a firmware update that I've been waiting for for a very long time, and that's firmware 2.3 for the Video Assist and Video Assist 4K, and this adds LUT support for the Video Assist and Video Assist 4K, which I am so happy to see that they finally got around to doing this, because from the very beginning of getting the Video Assist 4K, I was asking them on social media and via support emails saying that these recorders need LUT support, specifically because... The way I use it, and it's very common to use external recorders this way, is if you're shooting with a DSLR or mirrorless camera that has a lower quality internal codec, you likely want a Video Assist or Video Assist 4K for the higher quality external codec, ProRes, ProRes 422, ProRes 444, whatever it might be. And you're doing that because you're going to be grading the footage. You're probably shooting in a log format or with a very you know desaturated, muted look so you have a lot of flexibility in color correction and grading later on. Now, that's great, so you have all that information in the file, but when you're monitoring the footage, you want a LUT. You want to be able to see what the footage actually is going to look like after it's colored. This is super helpful for pulling focus and just checking your shot, making sure everything's exposed properly and looks good. It's also helpful when client is on set, looking over your shoulder, checking out the feed, looking at the footage, they don't want to see a log image, they want to see what it's actually going to look like. So to have an external recorder and monitor that doesn't have LUT support was a huge downside for the video assist. And one of the main reasons I couldn't recommend it and had to pick something else, you know, as my preferred external recorder, something like an Atomos or a Pix E5, there's so many external recorders and monitors now, and they're all fairly similar priced, that if Blackmagic was going to compete, they needed to add LUT support. Well, it took them quite a while, longer than I would have liked, but they finally added it with this 2.3 firmware. So this just got released. I haven't tested it myself, but I wanted to make a video letting everyone know that it does in fact exist. And it's such a small feature, but it's something that's so desperately needed. There's some other needed upgrades for the video assist still, even you know after this update, it's still not perfect, but they keep making it better. So I'm glad to see that Blackmagic has been rolling out these firmware updates and they have maintained you know their, their commitment to improving the video assists. So I do like to see that. They've also added some other uh, codec options to the video assist that were previously introduced on the video assist 4k they've also added false color monitoring to the video assist also previously introduced on the video assist 4k i know it's confusing that there's two different models one's the 4k one's the 1080p version the 1080p is the 5 inch and the 4k is the 7 inch they've got some uh, false color options and some peaking options that they've added they've got extended the luminance range a, a couple other small tweaks here but the main thing is this LUT support. So I'm really excited to try it out because having been shooting Vlog L with the GH4 and the Video Assist for the past uh, six months or so without any kind of LUT support, it's been a challenge, but um, you know, you have been able to make it work uh, through some, you know, workarounds and some, some tweaks, you know, switching color profiles uh, just to, you know, on the camera It'd be so nice if all that stuff was right in the video assist, and now it is. So I'm super happy that that Blackmagic Design has updated the video assist, introducing a feature that probably should have been there since the beginning, but at least they're keeping it, uh, getting it back on the right track. I'd still like to see anamorphic support and a few other features if they can, you know, improve the battery performance. That would be fantastic because those LP6s they get drained super fast. So if there's any way that they could improve the battery life, adding anamorphic support, just overall better reliability. Uh, I, I ran into a bug. This is something that's really important to know about the video assist. Maybe this 2.3 firmware will fix it. It's not mentioned in their notes, but I did reach out to them and tell them about this bug. If you are running the video assist with direct power and you lose power unexpectedly where you don't power the unit off properly, so let's say it just gets unplugged you, the power dies, and this, you know, this isn't ideal for any kind of electronic equipment, but it does occasionally happen where you'll lose power unexpectedly. If that happens and you reboot the unit, in my case, on, on a couple times, and I've tested this myself, the recording after the reboot, it will look like it's recording, but the time will not uh, diminish so the the remaining time won't go down and it won't actually be recording anything it'll look like it's recording it'll say that it's recording 
but it won't actually be writing any files. And when you go into the computer later to edit those files, they'll just be kind of broken thumbnails. Like there, there aren't anything. It's not like any data was recorded. It hasn't taken up any space on the card. So what you have to do in that situation is power down the unit properly, restart it once again, and then you're back up and running. An easy way to avoid this problem is to always have batteries in the unit. So have those LP6s just on the back all the time. It's helpful too because it charges through the power supply, which is nice to have not all uh, monitors do that, but it's nice to have those charging on the back. And then if you lose power for whatever reason via the direct uh, wall power or the AC power, if that gets unplugged or whatever, you've got those battery backups right there so you don't have a, a power failure and then you, re you reboot the unit, try and record something. It looks like it's recording, but it's actually not. Uh, it's very, very helpful uh, to know about this. I'm gonna test it on this 2.3 firmware and see if it's still an issue, but if you have a video assist, or specifically the video assist 4K, because that's what I noticed the problem on, be aware of that issue. Test it for yourself. Maybe your unit doesn't have the same problem mine does, but it seemed like a serious bug that uh, kind of r didn't totally ruin a shoot for me, but it would have came very close to ruining the shoot where you know, I thought I was recording footage and then I go back for playback and none of the clips are there. So keep that in mind. If you lose power, double and triple check the video assist to make sure that everything's operating as expected. But as far as this video goes, this will be this will be it. It's just kind of an update. Wanted to share my excitement and kind of draw attention to this firmware update because it's not one of those things that a lot of people will point out point out when firmware gets updated. But this is um, a pretty nice feature to have added to the video assist because all around it's a it's a great uh, external recorder and monitor, uh, except for a few of the the issues I've pointed out. But now that we've got the LUTs, that's one thing to check off the list.